All right, so I'm going to be making four flags. And so what I have here is the material for four flags. These were 10 foot uh, one by fours. And now they're all cut in half, or they're ripped in half, I should say. Is I have my stop block set up, so it'll cut at 37 and a half inches. I could probably put three or four of these things here to make that cut. So let me get started on that. All right, did a little bit of sawing here, and uh, got all these 37 and a half inch strips. And this is how much waste I got. So each 10 foot strip got me three pieces. So I don't even know how many I have here. I have a lot. So I'm gonna make these flags two different ways. I got four flags once again, and uh, I'm gonna make two flags with just the, the wood exactly how it is. So I got a stack here of uh, like 26 things for two flags without any alteration to the wood. The other ones I'm gonna do roundovers with the router but I don't like to round over the union part so the stars will stick better. So I have 14 here because there's seven stripes for each union. And I have 14 where the round over is only gonna to go to this line and the rest is gonna stay flat. So let's round over these two batches and uh, go from there. So you might have seen me do this light burn technique in a different video. Uh, it looks pretty good. The only problem is it's a little splotchy. So there's one other technique that I also am going to try for this video. And I'll show you that right now. What if instead of this small tank of propane, we had this big tank of propane? What if instead of this little tiny nozzle, we have this propane torch instead? All right, so this is the results after we burned it with the uh, propane torch. It's pretty dark, pretty charred. You can actually burn it more than this if you wanted to. Burning it more would uh, just make the grooves a little deeper. But after you char it like this, you just take the scraper and you uh, scrape off the char. And what you're left with is a pretty nice, fairly consistent pattern with texture that shows the wood grain and has a contrast between light and dark which uh, helps it take the stain a little better. I did have one, one part here. Looks like it had a lot of sap in it and just caught on fire and stayed on fire. So it's got a little extra, but that just adds to the character. All right, so the next step is pretty fun. It's just to wipe these down with water and that gets the char off, but it also shows the grain off a little better once it's wet. You start to see the uh, contrast of the colors show up a little bit more. So, I don't know if you can see it, Let's switch. It looks pretty nice. Let's see if we can hold it side by side here. Yeah, so you see the difference there. That wiping down really, really shows off the contrast. That's why I say it's pretty fun. We'll focus there. All right, so let's look at the difference between the two kinds of burning techniques side by side. Over here we have the light burn as you can see it is a little splotchy but i'm able to put these dark edges which kind of gives a good effect after everything's stained and a lot of people like this and uh, over here this is the uh 
the charred ones that were charred and scraped. Less splotchy, more consistent grain pattern. So that's what it looks like pre-stain. So I'll back up and maybe you can judge for yourself which one you like at this point. So we're going to do a little bit of staining. I'm not going to show you the whole process because it's pretty monotonous. You'll get the idea pretty quick. But um, first of all, there's seven pieces that need to be uh, blue and red and or blue and white. And uh, I'm actually not going to do the white stain on these two. I did white stain on a different two. And so I'm going to have two that don't have white and just have the raw wood look. But I still need to separate the blue from the not blue. And so what I've used, I've seen a lot of people use these, is just hammer a couple or hammer some razor blades in there. And that uh, makes a good edge for the stain. So what I have here is Verithane Warren Navy and Verithane Barn Red is what I'm using. Let's go ahead and get some blue done. All right, now that I got it all stained up, I am going to put it in the, my homemade clamp here for the glue up. I actually made a video about making this clamp. If you want to see that, you can go to my channel and check it out. Once you got it all clamped down, you want to check for glue squeeze out because uh, if that glue dries, it can look ugly. So what I use is a wet paper towel to get all the glue up. Otherwise, you could spread it and it could look real bad when it dries. All right, so it's time to put some stars on. And uh, I just finished making this jig not too long ago. And I also just finished making a video on my YouTube channel that uh, kind of explains this jig. So if you want more information on the jig, check out the channel. All right, you get the idea. I just put 50 stars on like this and uh, let's go ahead and skip ahead. And here's what it looks like with all 50 stars in the jig. I'm going to be using a French cleat to hang the flag, so I'm going to take this kind of material and I'm going to cut a 45 uh, miter chamfer. I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle all along the length of it. That's what I'm going to do. So here we go.
So I'm going to attach two things to the back of each flag. First thing is these cross beams and they are going to reinforce the cohesion of the glue to make sure that it stays strong. <clears throat> the other thing I'm going to do is the French cleat. And as you can see, when one of these 45s is hung, when one of these 45s is attached to the flag and the other part is attached to the wall, it'll hang like that right on the 45. And it's a pretty strong way to hang something this heavy. We're gonna glue it down and then pin nail it with one inch nails. Just for the record, I made the French cleats 18 inches long with the idea that uh, the part that attaches to the wall, which will go like this, you screw it into the wall and 18 inches should provide you with enough space to put holes there at 16 inch apart. The idea is that you can screw it into the studs at 16 inches apart. And I might pre-drill some holes if I'm going to sell these things. Maybe three holes on this side and three holes on that side. So there'll be different options for how to hang it. All right, so it took me a little bit longer than I thought to make all four of these flags. But let's go ahead and take a look at them and see which one you like best. This is number one. It is a light burn flag with just the wood look, no white stain. This is flag number two. It is the heavy burn where it was charred and scraped and it also has the raw wood look. Here's flag number three. This is, eh, what is it? This is the light burn look and this is the one that does have the red and the white stain on it. And last but not least, this is flag number four. It is the deep burn charred and scraped look with the white stain on it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been pretty fun to make these flags, a little challenging here and there. I think I'm going to try to sell these flags. I haven't sold anything online before. I've had some people I know commission me to make a few things here and there. If you want to see my other videos that have to do with these flags where I make some jigs, some clamping jigs, and how I put the stars on, you can see those videos maybe somewhere in this screen hopefully i can stick them up there if not they'll be in links in the description thank you so much for watching and until next time don't be afraid to be a doofus